In sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. Unless you are Tom Brady, and then you get every Wednesday off. Welcome into the No Off Days podcast, Scott Smith and Chris Cato. Get you a get, get you a buddy that can talk makeup. Okay, that's what Chris and I do in, in the downtime before the show. Starts. I think I taught you some things today. I, you opened up my mind. You blew my mind yeah. with some of the your tips on uh, on makeup usage. And of course, for for news folks, this is nothing new. For right. ordinary folks, it's very odd. This discussion, somewhat disturbing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost uh, scary that I know exactly what to order when I walk up to the makeup counter and I don't bat an eye there's just no shame you I said the your I, color is honey crisp is uh, that honey, a honey beige this time okay. of year now in the summer <laughs> I've been known to go to kind of a little darker shade <laughs> no. but we're at honey yeah. beige right now okay check with me in December I'll just be putting on white paint. beautiful you put yeah. you, you put your tan on yeah uh, in the booth today uh, Brian King as always BK um, you are behind the controls behind the curtain today uh, what do we have on the big show Good show today. Good show today, Scott. We got Kevin Burkhart, lead yeah. uh, NFL play-by-play -play guy now. Uh, we'll be talking to him, getting his thoughts on the Bucks and the Packers game Sunday. And also, we're going to talk to Gerald McCoy. Wow. Ooh, yes, Gerald McCoy. Uh, out of football, still wanted to get back into football. We'll check in with him, see what he's up to. And then at Is the this end, one of his requirements for getting back into football? He has he to has do all to. the random podcasts of yes. anyone who reaches That's, out That is a requirement okay. through the uh, NFLPA, I believe. Okay. He would be a good podcaster, I think. I think yeah. so, too. Post-football post, post football career, whenever whenever it, the, the curtain does finally close. Right. Very, right. very interesting guy. I, I met him once. He won't remember it, but it was... Well, we'll find out. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> I saw you at Krispy Kreme. No, I saw, I saw him at Comic-Con. He's, he's a big Marvel Comics guy. Yes. Wait, you went to Comic-Con, huh? As a reporter, it, okay. you know, it doing my job. Interesting. Not as a fan. All right, so we got Burkhart, we got Gerald McCoy, GMAC... And then uh, anything anything at the end of the show that we can look uh, forward to? Maybe some headlines. <laughs> maybe some news headlines. Don't, we, don't, don't most shows do headlines at the top, at the head? No, at not, the not this show. <laughs> not the Nod, nod Pod. Oh, Nod Pod. <laughs> okay. Well, we're looking forward to that. Uh, I believe that there's always some fun and frivolity at the end of the show. That's trying to Let's how, hope. how we try to keep Let's it hope. packed. A lot of we're, pressure. A lot of pressure well, on Brian. If there isn't Brian, you're fired. All right. Here's how you can watch or listen to the Nod Pod. If you're listening right now and you want to know how to watch, well, you just go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. If you're watching and you want to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or Stitcher, all you got to do is take your, your smartphone out and then point the camera feature mm. at the QR code. It's on your screen right now, and it'll take you to our main page where all the, the wonderful mysteries of the Nod Pod will be unlocked and revealed to you. It's a that's that's my, my favorite part of this podcast <laughs> is how you describe where to find our podcast. There's a lot of avenues to find it, and yet the more avenues, the harder it is to find. Right? Yeah. We Isn't need to put our QR code like all over restroom walls and everything. That's a great yeah. idea. The truck stops. On gas handles, yeah. you know, unleaded, We're, Nod Pod. Yeah, that's where you can find it. While us. you're filling your tank. That's a, that's a good slogan. Really Fill good. your tank with the Nod Pod. Uh, so uh, let's start with some NFL news. And uh, as, as we are taping this podcast, the big news of the day in the Tampa Bay region is the signing of Cole Beasley. So yeah. the former Buffalo Bills receiver signing, adding uh, you know a complimentary piece to what has been a depleted receiving core for the Bucks. He is your prototypical slot receiver. Tom Brady likes those. And from what I understand... Tom Brady does like those because every receiver that's a slot receiver since Julian Edelman has been in the the, the kind of the prototype of like he's an Edelman yeah he, he's kind of like Julian Edelman so they used to call him a Welker but then Welker got surpassed that, by well, Edelman, that is so. true I should yes yeah, so let me get the <laughs> hierarchy correct so you know Beasley's an interesting story he was one he was with the Buffalo Bills uh, he actually was quite productive even last year um, he had, I believe, he, he matched his career catch mark, 82 catches the last two seasons. Yeah. So he's a go-to guy. He's reliable, and I think that's what Brady is desperately looking for, especially when you look back to last week's game. In New Orleans, there were some drop passes. Clearly, Brady was frustrated, mm -hmm. and though he's never going to pin that on his receivers, he does put a high premium on experience, why a guy like Gronk, and the guys that he's played with over the years, he, he likes guys that are experienced. Young guys are a little bit tougher. Question, uh, why is Beasley available? Beasley was, from what I understand, he, he wanted to be traded. He requested okay. a trade uh, in the offseason. Things fell apart for him in Buffalo. I think it might have 
been connected to his decision to be unvaccinated. He was quite vocal about that. Right, he was he was vocal about it, but uh, he was productive on the field last year when he played. So uh, I think that relationship fell apart. They ended up releasing him, and then the Bills got hit with a – I think they, they paid like $6 million, they had a cap hit or whatever. Uh, so they, I think they did want to bring him back. Yeah. But he wanted to also find the right situation to go into. And if you're willing to walk away from an NFL contract for not taking a vaccine, then clearly you – you don't really care about money is not the thing that is controlling you, right? Yeah. So I think that that might be the case for Beasley, but uh, he's 33 years old and, you know, how he fits into this receiving core long term. Now, that is still going to be determined because Julio Jones, uh, you know, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, when he comes back from his suspension, there, will there be enough room for everybody? Yeah. So do we see him in the lineup on Sunday against Green Bay? Probably as they try to patch together a receiving core with Mike Evans serving the one Could game. Be. Yeah, they yeah. picked him up, put him on the practice squad. How long yeah. he stays there, we shall yeah. see. Uh, but, of course, one of those receiver positions is open because of what happened last week in New Orleans. Right. Another dust-up, Mike Evans, M- M- uh, Marshawn Lattimore. I mean, this is like um, – this is like an old wrestling feud. It's it's yeah. Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, you know? Right. Like, whenever these two get in the same room, they're just – there has to be something. A metal chair is going to come out. <laughs> no, it's – you know, we remember 2017, the first incident uh, where, you know, Jameis, you know, comes off the bench to poke at the Saints. And then, you know, uh, Mike Evans comes out of left field to whack Lattimore. And, um, you know, the NFL – has a long memory right when it comes to these kind of things sure and i feel like that's where the suspension came from this time it's almost a hey you know we've bad judgment one time okay we'll give you a little fine i think he was fined like 40 grand or something for that incident in 2017 you know you show this poor judgment again we're going to come down a little harder on you that's where it's to me, I, I always have, I always seem to take issue with the NFL's extracurricular penalties. I like on the field penalties. I like things that 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 are, take place in that game. If you want to boot them out of the game, fine. If you want to slap them with multiple f- penalties in that uh, game, I'm, then fine. But to me, like what takes place, kind of the, this the pushing and the shoving, we have called it a a brawl, a melee, all this kind of stuff. But like the reality is, it, like this game of football looks a lot like that fight just between the whistles so it's so it's that kind of violence that's taking place it just take takes place outside the whistles i understand sportsmanship's a part of it i'm not saying you lit them off i just don't understand that to me uh, the the one game of suspension afterward penalize the team in the moment where it actually hurts well i think they did and i i i, I like they the- did this year but prior you know when when that happened between Lattimore and Evans before Evans was not kicked out of the game it was yeah. one of those things they went back and reviewed and suspended him so well I, that's five years ago too they've evolved a bit I think in in how they administer those penalties I I think it's fair I, I this is not an indictment on Mike Evans wonderful person we know all he's done for the Tampa Bay community his hometown in Galveston but you know this was poor judgment it hurt his team Todd Bowles you know said as much that it hurt his team and, you know, he didn't defend himself well, you know, in, in a post-game interview, which, by the way, this wasn't the only questionable post-game interview given yeah. after the game. Uh, he said he saw – got it right here. He says he saw Lattimore punch Lenny. Right. There was no punch thrown. Well, it, it, and, no, and, I mean, it, it yeah, depends. It, you, so and, and if I may. He struck him if in the If I may, he says he pushed Tom. He didn't push Tom. It, none of that happened. He, Mike Evans saw what he wanted to see. How did you see that, Mike? You were walking away from the action – you saw what you wanted to see happen back there, and he went and, you know, Lenny was taking care of things. Lenny had already defended Tom, you know, and, and so Mike Evans used opportunity to take a cheap shot against a guy he doesn't like. That's what happened. Yeah, I mean, but I think at the what we're doing now is going back and saying, well, can you can just control your anger? Obviously, that is part of the issue, right? And I think what he did see, he certainly saw Lenny get struck in the face mask. That did happen. Whether you want to call it a punch, I mean, these guys are wearing helmets. Whether the, it was a hand that was closed, or I'm not, I'm not quite it was, sure. It wasn't that. a punch, and and Lenny but shoved the, him first. Right, and Lenny gets no suspension. I, I'm not <laughs> trying to let Mike Evans off the hook for his actions. I right? think you are. So coming off the top rope is probably not appropriate, yeah. right? But we're also talking about a game that is is about violence. And, and it's about Okay, so everyone just leave the sidelines and let's just no, know, no, no. stop the you're, game. Go attack the person that is antagonizing you on the field. You're missing my, my meta point, which is the overall thing is penalize in the game. To me, if you have something that is like way out of line, 
like what we saw from Miles Garrett several years ago when he took the helmet of right. Mason Rudolph and bashed him in the head with it without wearing one. Like, that is the type of thing that you want to suspend. Like, grabbing guys and pushing them to the ground, I mean, that to, to me that just seems so weak. It seems very reactive, but that that is what I believe the NFL does many times is that they, they just kind of react to, oh, okay, we probably should suspend him. Was anybody hurt? Did any, was any legitimate punch thrown? No and no. So Well, they end up in a scrum in a pile. You don't know what's going to happen there. You're talking about player injury and careers. It's, it wasn't a good move, you know, and I feel like if you want to debate NFL, you know, suspensions then and give me a case study, then let's talk, you know, Deshaun Watson versus Calvin Ridley, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But I think the NFL got it right here. I think that the suspension will be upheld. Okay. Um, all right, so at the beginning of the show, we mentioned our first guest. Well, he is the Mr. T to our Fox A team here for Fox Sports, and uh, we need to bring him in right now. Kevin Burkhardt, congratulations on the big promotion. I don't know if you – maybe you're a Mur Murdoch guy. I don't know if, if you if you like the, the Mr. T uh, comparisons. but I, Listen, awesome. I love the A team, and that is, um, <laughs> that's definitely the first time I've ever been compared to Mr. T in my life, Scott. But I'll take it, man. I, I'm just excited to be here. Good to be back with you, and Chris, thanks for having me. Well, you know, it's it, when you got the promotion here in the off season. You you now are the the lead uh, play by play guy, and uh, of course, well deserved. But we in the not too distant past, you spent some time with the Rays, and it's not uncommon that if you make a pit stop with the Rays, that a big payday is is soon to, <laughs> to come. Do you feel like that might have been part of it? Is that what it was? So you go to you go to you go to the Rays, and then you get a, you get traded to another team. But I was already with the other team, so That's I know what you're going for there. But listen, that was a great experience. I, I loved working uh, for the Rays for that short time, you know. Uh, and I still keep in touch with everyone over there. So it it was I loved it. I really enjoyed doing that. Have you have you gotten any messages from from Buck and Troy since this all went down? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I like one of the first most supportive people when all this happened was was Joe Buck. I mean, you know, he reached out when he was leaving. He uh, was supportive throughout. I mean, we're we're friends. He's been we, we've been close since I got to Fox. He's always been one of my biggest supporters. So when it became official, he was um, he was literally the first person to text me that day. Number one. Um, so it's pretty cool to have that from him, who I admire and respect uh, to have that, you know, that sense of. Um, you know, welcoming and confidence from him. It meant a lot to me. I'm sure that the green room spreads are, are better for the, for the A team, mm. right? I mean, like there's some people opening the doors for you that otherwise probably wouldn't have, right? Well, you know, we, you know, we have, <laughs> uh, the difference is on the road, we have a much bigger crew. Like, you know, there's more cameras, there's more everything, there's more toys. And yes, like the breakfast spread went from like a muffin <laughs> to now you got your choice. Man, it's a little, you know, sad. these things happen, right? It's a little different. Well earned. Yeah, I, I knew that there was going to be a difference maker. You know, this is I, I've I got to think that this is a, a pinch me kind of year for you. You're you're in there all the big games. You are the guy. When you were a kid growing up and dreaming of doing this at some point in time, could you have imagined that it would have happened in this fashion? Well, look, Scott, I mean, we all get into this for the same reason, right? I mean, we're all, we all either played like you did, grew up sports fans, like there's some connection to sports. Um, and for me, I always just wanted to be involved in the field. I always, I always love broadcasting. It's what I always want to do. Did I ever dream about calling the Super Bowl? All the time. You know, you, you dream, <laughs> of course, you dream about the Super Bowl, the World Series, all those big events, right? You, you kind of practice it on the tape recorder or in my backyard. But did I ever really think that I would get a chance to do it? I, I mean, no. There's, what, 10 people, 11 people who have called play-by-play -play the Super Bowl in the history of the world. So I'm honored to be on that list. It has felt kind of like uh, this last offseason with the addition of some some new outlets. Um, it was like an announcer transfer portal a little bit, yeah. like some, some places, some swaps, some changes. But it has definitely brought, a, I think, a lot of attention and uh, – it underscores the importance of having someone, you know, a good team, a team that has chemistry in the booth for some of the biggest contests. Does it feel like, you know, that there's this added importance, uh, you know, now with with the crew and the balance of guys that are up there in the booth? Well, look, is it is it a little different? Yeah, I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't because it's uh, the number one game. And, and, and maybe I haven't felt it so much so far, but as the year goes on, you're doing Thanksgiving and the NFC Championship and obviously the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's different. I haven't done that before. 
Um, the beauty is I can only do what I've always done. That's do games. I, I know how to do games, right? And I'm going to do it my style. Um, it's just with a different group, which is great. You know, it's I, I'm I'm all for that. The one beauty for me, well, it's a couple things. First of all, this is my tenth year at Fox, so it's not like I'm brand new. It's just that I'm on a little bit bigger audience scale now. And my partner is Greg Olson, who I was with last year, who I was, I've known since he was a kid. Hmm. So we have great chemistry and that makes it a lot of fun, right? And, you know, you, you get this promotion, you work with a new group, you know, there's expectations and pressure, which I like, but you get to do it with a friend of mine who I've known for a long, long time. Uh, that makes it really cool. You and Greg will be uh, working your magic on Sunday in that booth for the big Bucks Packers game. What are we looking forward to here? I mean, to me, this is a te two teams with a lot of similarities. You got strong defenses, veteran quarterbacks, and they're both kind of searching for some receivers. What do you see happening on Sunday? Yeah, Chris, it's a, it's a good call. I mean, there's a lot of interesting parallels. I mean, look, the number one thing is, and, and we have asked this before, but is this the last time that Brady will duel Rodgers, right? I mean, is this the last time we're going to see two of the greatest of all time to go against each other, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers? That's number one. So you have to cherish it and just enjoy that rivalry. And, and you know, and they know it. You know, usually, you know, you always say, well, I'm not playing against the other quarterback. But there is a fun dynamic there with those two. So uh, you got to love that. And then, yeah, you're talking about, you know, maybe the top two teams, um, but certainly two of the top, you know, three or four teams in the NFC. You know, obviously the Rams, the defending champs, Eagles look good. There are others. The point being is I do think there are a lot of similarities here. Now, the Packers D hasn't been as good as they were last year yet. It's only two games. But, yeah, Green Bay, they lose Devontae Adams in the offseason, so they're trying to figure out who's their alpha guy in the wideout room. And the Bucs are, are loaded at wide receiver. It just so happens that right now, they're, none of them are available. With Mike right. Evans getting suspended, uh, and then Godwin's got the hamstring injury. He's great when he's healthy. Hopefully get him back soon. Julio Jones looked great week one, then out last week. So now all of a sudden, they're scrambling and trying to figure out who's going to catch the ball. So it, it's going to be fascinating to see. They both have to figure out a different way to win. And I think for Green Bay, it's definitely the use of the running backs. And we've seen Tampa Bay go that way, too. You know, even last week, when they weren't running the ball very well, in fact, they couldn't run it much at all, they stuck with it. And mm -hmm. I think it kind of kept them in the game until they could break through a couple, uh, break through and get a couple of big plays. Yeah, yeah, this will be your second week on the call for the Bucks. I mean, last week we had, a, obviously, a fiery one in New Orleans. And, you know, yeah. when, the, when the Bucks and the Saints meet, a couple things are going to happen. Tablets are going to get thrown, and, and, Mike, and Mike Evans is coming off the top rope. So, but you were a part of that that atmosphere to feel it inside the Superdome. Uh, what were your impressions of of the Bucks? Because you know, to be perfectly honest, like that offense is not quite humming just yet. So there's a couple things, and yeah, those those matches with the Saints are great. I mean, it's one of the best rivalries in, in the sport right now. It's so physical, and 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 that's just I love it. But in terms of where the Bucks are right now offensively, here's what I think. Are they, you know, humming like where they want to be? No, they're not. But neither are the Packers. And neither are a lot of teams two weeks in. Um, but I think, look, here's the deal. I think this year, you know, last year we're marveling again at Brady, who led the league in passing, who led the league in touchdowns. But he also led the league in attempts. And it's like, I don't know that he wants to do that anymore. And I know that he feels they don't have to do that to win. So you kind of preserve – the arm of the quarterback you don't have to air it out 50 times a game to win you've got a real good team with good receivers good offensive line even though the line's been banged up too and a really good running back in leonard fournette and you add in the fact that you know the bucks might have a defense here for the ages mm -hmm. I, I mean yeah. their d looks absolutely terrific so you know you, you you play with what you've got if your defense is playing that well you don't have to air it out 50 times and go for the big play every time. You play smart. You run the ball. When the chances are there, you take it. And, and I think Tom Brady's just fine doing that. Does he want to score more than one offensive touchdown a game? Yeah, he does. And I think that'll come. But I don't know that you're going to see the Bucks of last year. I think it's going to look a little different. Maybe not every week, but I think that's by design. Favorite NFL stadium to call a game in? Wow. Um I mean, there, there's there's a there's a few of them that really strike a chord with me. But if I'm going to pick one, it's Lambeau. Uh, it's just the history there, the fact that it's literally in the middle of a neighborhood. 
Um, there's so many great things about it, um, you know, but I, if I'm picking one, it's there. I was fortunate to do a playoff game there a couple of years ago and it was just, it was just special. Uh, used to be Seattle, uh, back when they had Legion of Boom, that place was so loud. It was ridiculous. You know, we, we once did a playoff game there and a monitor in the booth fell over, <laughs> uh, when they won a playoff game, Cam Chancellor returned an interception for a touchdown. That's how much the place was rocking. So you know, and then Kansas City is always a lot of fun. I mean, there's a bunch, right? I mean, there's so many good ones, but if I'm picking one, it's hard for me to go against Lambo with all that history. Lambo's got to kind of have a little bit of a, a Field of Dreams vibe to it. I mean, there's no there's no corn stalks, but it's the intimacy of that venue, right? I mean, I, speaking of, I mean, how cool was this Field of Dreams game? You've been able to, to be a part of this and, and to go out there. Is it as magical as it comes across on TV in person? Yeah, it is. And, you know, we really got to experience that last year. You, you don't know what you're going to expect. I mean, you're walking in, you're thinking this is going to be pretty cool. But then when you're driving down the road in Iowa and there is nothing, there's just corn, there's corn and some farms and some <laughs> barns. That's it. And you're like, how is there going to be a major league stadium here? And then you turn off the road and you drive down, you still don't see it. You still don't see it. And then boom, there's a baseball stadium right in the middle of the corn. It's it's pretty wild. And look, I, you know, growing up, I, you know, everyone loved that movie. So the movie site is cool enough, but then when you see that they're actually playing the game, like kind of right next door in the middle of the field, it, it is magical. I mean, if you are a baseball fan, I don't even think you have to be a huge, huge baseball fan. I don't even think you have to see the movie. There's something to it. Um, that's a pretty special experience going kind of embracing the whole thing. So yeah, I, I, I think it is that good. It's incredible. Really, well, before we let you go, let's stick with baseball. Um, you know, before you came to Fox, you were beloved by New York Mets fans. It just created such a following there and doing the call there with um, with uh, Sportsnet New York with Keith Hernandez and Ron Darling. And you developed just quite a rapport there with the fans. And then I noticed uh, you got to come back to City Field a few weeks ago and throw out the first pitch. What was that like? Yeah, Chris, I did. It was it was incredible. You know, I grew up in New Jersey, so I grew up a Mets fan. You know, as a kid, and then uh, I said I worked uh, for that network that covers the team for eight years. And getting a chance to go back, we were promoting the NFL season, so uh, they had me back to throw out the first sit, uh, first pitch and promote. You know, the Super Bowl on Fox, and it was so fun. You know, I got such a nice reception. I, uh, those fans have always been great to me. And I got to tell you, I had so many people, and this the advice was the same. Don't bounce it. Don't bounce it. Don't bounce it. I mean, I had Sandy Alderson, you know, in the front office of the Mets come out and say, hey, have fun. Don't bounce it. And, you know, so I'm like, okay. So I had a couple of warm-up pitches down below the stadium, which was helpful about 10 minutes before I threw the pitch. And I told myself, I don't care if I throw it into the stands up high. I am not bouncing it. There is no chance I'm bouncing it. So that was my thing. I just you didn't did, you kept it high. Thing. You kept it high. You put it. Yeah, right I couldn't have a meme that lived on forever with some <laughs> no. like awful bounce. I just couldn't bounce it high off the net, whatever. Just not bouncing it. So I was I was happy that I survived. Do you have you been animated by the Simpsons? Is that did I notice that on your Instagram? Is that your yeah, we had, um, oh, it was pretty cool. You know, I'm working for, uh, working in the studio for us. We're on the Fox lot where, of course, they created and, and do the Simpsons. Um, and a couple years ago for the postseason, they did this fun skit of our whole crew of Frank Thomas and A-Rod and Big Poppy and myself, and they Simpsonized us. So they sent us uh, a, a couple of pictures and a poster oh. of us, like, in that skit. So, um Pretty cool. I would yeah, die and go that, to heaven. That is Simpson me. <laughs> you can't see us now because of our grasp of technology, but I'm wearing a Duff beer shirt, so I would love <laughs> to be Simpsonized. Yeah, well. Simpson, I, you know, and I like it because there's a lot less gray hair in the Simpsonized <laughs> version. It's like perfect. So like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they, they did that to me. It's very nice of them. That's, that's nice. He is ticking off all the resume accomplishments <laughs> that you have desired. I will aspire to be Kevin Burkhart be one day. Be Simpsonized. <laughs> well, we uh, certainly look forward to you on the call this weekend uh, and welcome you into Tampa uh, as you are going to be uh, – calling the big Packers Bucks game here week three and and we shall see uh, it's going to be a good one Rodgers versus Brady and he is the great Kevin Burkhardt thank you for taking some time with us thanks Kim. Kevin thanks for best. having me guys looking forward to it we'll see ya see ya very good well in addition to Kevin Burkhardt giving us a great call in the game he also his A-team provided 
one of the great sound bites coming out of that game that provided plenty of fodder uh, after last week's game between the Bucks and the Saints, and that, of course, was Devin White. I'm not sure that if that was Rinaldi or if that was Aaron Andrews on the field with him, but um, it, it, did, I, it made me laugh. I got to be perfectly yeah. honest. I know some people are like, wow, he's – He's throwing shade on Jameis Winston, but I I got a very good chuckle out of it. And I'm going to read you the quote because <laughs> it do. amuses me. When Jameis left our team, everybody knows that what he did that last year. And we feel we had a, a great defense then. And you know he threw 30 picks. And you know we just knew that he would give the ball to us. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of doubled down on that, didn't he? Like he's just Yeah, he didn't uh, back away from it. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I know that I know that a lot of people say, well, just don't give the other team bulletin board material. I, I get it. But at the same time, this is a bit of rivalry. And I think Devin White's the type of guy that's just going to tell you what he thinks, and I appreciate that. And I think yeah. it's kind of funny. And it adds another – kind of throws another charcoal on the blaze, right? And plus, Jameis is going around doing his W-eating dance, and so <laughs> I, I don't think – you know, I don't think the Bucks players like that. You know, some of the Bucks players I don't think liked Devin White saying that, though, did they? Didn't Chris Godwin kind of come to – There know. was – yeah, there was a, a live stream on Leonard Fournette that uh, where Chris Godwin was overheard asking Devin, hey, yeah. why, why did you say that? So yeah. – I mean, I get it. Like you want to, you know, different people have different things that they don't want to touch. But um, but thank you. I, I enjoyed it. I thank you, Devin White. <laughs> they gave Devin. us something to talk about. Uh, one guy that uh, never mind is speaking his mind, uh, but yet he there was nothing. He, I can't find fault in anything very he polite. ever said. No, very, he's very, a very polite, polite man. Uh, he is nine years with the Bucks, three-time All-Pro, six-time Pro Bowler, Gerald McCoy. There he is. Wow. Gerald, thank you for, for joining us today. How's everything? <laughs> oh, I'm great, man. I just got to uh, – first off, thanks for having me. Absolutely. We, As we welcomed you in, we, we kind of uh, rehashed the, the Devin White comments on the field after last week's game against the Saints, and, and I'm sure you, you heard them. If, Ger if Gerald mm -hmm. McCoy is in that locker room, does anything actually need to be said to Devin White? Do you does does that bother you at all? It don't bother me. That's a that's a coaching thing. Like if, if it's gonna bother somebody, it probably bother the coach. But I just look at it like as a player, uh, whatever you say, as long as we back it up, it don't matter. Like you just had your brothers back. Uh, I think it was more of more so of a because that's an ex teammate. Yeah. And it was more of like he was here so have you know you should have i think that's what chris's issue was you know he was here he was our teammate like you ain't got to do him like that right you know just play the game we played a great game the defense is on fire right now just take the win and move on you know but i i do feel like in his comments though look he brought up that year he where dropped they, the number 30 th he, where yeah. they had a good defense that year and so it does it seems like he has a little bit of a chip yeah i mean he at least you know is is saying Look, we we know that uh, we had a good team that year. I don't know. Kind, kind of seems like he's carrying a little bit, but I'm okay with it. I like. I, I mean, I think Devin White's comments are, are hilarious. Yeah, I mean, he just, he just re, he's just reiterating their defense being good. Saw you on the sideline week one in Dallas. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. that looks like Gerald McCoy, but he, he's lean and mean. Are you leaning up for <laughs> your TV role? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm still staying in shape, man. Um, you know, with the injuries. My goal as a player was to uh, – I want to say what my goal is, but I don't want to give anybody any light that I don't feel like I should give. So, I mean, you can read between the lines. Oh, come on now. Give us the light. There's a <laughs> – you've, you've got these beautiful lights behind you. Lead us to the light. Yeah, That's the only light there's you're going to get, Cato. Sorry. There's a you, – when you, when you – like me, I, um, I look for inspiration in a lot of different places. And um, – you know, you you look for your you look at mentors and people you want to emulate, and there's a certain somebody who played a certain amount of years, and I set the goal to play that many years. Well, I'm at that mark now, but with these injuries, you know, I've just been sidelined, so um, I just stayed in shape and gonna be ready when that phone rings because uh, this would be year 13, and um, hmm. the goal is to, was to play 13 years and then see what happens. Well, with the last two years of injuries, you know, I kind of, you know, got off track. But I, once I set my mind to something, it's, it's hard to stop me. You so still got that fire. Just in, been, yeah. Yeah, I've just been staying in shape. And, you know, like, honestly, like, just me being fully transparent, like, watching games on Sundays, like, like it's hard. Like, I almost tear up because it's like, I know I'm not, not out there because I'm not good enough. It's because I've 
just my injuries, you know, and sure. uh, I played well last year. The one preseason game I played, you know, I felt like I played great. And then, um, you know, the few reps I got with the Raiders, but um, it's part of the game and injuries is a part of the game. And one thing they tell you um, in this league, don't get old and don't get hurt. <laughs> so <laughs> They seem both seem inevitable, game, right? Though. Both seem inevitable. Yeah. Uh, so give us a glimpse of what that's like in the waiting because, you know, you're staying in shape. You're ready for that phone call. Do you stay in contact with a handful of teams that look like roster-wise they may be just an injury away from giving you a call? How does – is it complete radio silence? What's it like from your perspective? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of both. You know, you, you have your connections. It's about kind of about who you know. And then um, you just stay connected to different people and make sure they know you're available. And that's all you can do. But the important thing is to be ready. Stay ready because when that phone rings, there is no, all right, give me a week. It's, hey, can you come now? Like, we, your flight is, we can book you in a couple hours. We can book you in the morning. That's how it works. So you just got to be ready. It don't matter. Like, last year when I signed with the Raiders, they called me for a workout. They called me that day. I had a heavy leg day. I'm talking about heavy squats, sled pushes, heel, running heels, all of that. And then I got the a phone call. Day. Hey, can you work out in the morning? Heck yeah. <laughs> I just, hey, <laughs> it is yeah. what it is. So <laughs> that's just, ready. that's how it goes. So some, I mean, it's silent, but you stay, you know, you stay in contact with people and just keep watching, keep watching the league. Like, okay, mm-hmm. they got them, they got them, they got them. And me, I'm a fan. Even when I'm on a team, I'm a fan. So I'm, like seeing guys on the field, even as I'm playing, I'm just still a fan of the game. So I just, you know, I'm I'm daddy and husband every day of the week except Sunday. Sunday is <laughs> I go to get up, go to church, and then they know like, hey, don't bother him. Yep. <laughs> don't daddy, bug him. Yeah, daddy's at his second church now. Is one of the, yeah. one of one of those people that you keep in contact with, Jason Light? Yeah, I um I reach out to the Glazers and Jason all the time because those that's still my family. And, um, you know, I just congratulate them, let them know I'm watching and just let them know I'm rooting for them. You know, like all the other stuff, whether I get a phone call to, hey, we want to bring you back and all that. That's like secondary. Most of the time I talk to the Glazers of Jason, it's just like encouraging word because, uh, you know, that's why I came to the game in Dallas. I'm like, man, my family's coming to town. And then my son, I knew if I didn't take him to see that game he would have like really been upset with his dad. So I'm like, man, I can't have my kids mad at me. And um, that was, I had, I had fun and I really enjoyed going to the game, but that was hard for me. Cause I never, that's the first time I've been to an NFL game other than playing in it or being on a team. And uh, you know, I sat in the stands and watched it, but I'm in the stands. Like I'm trying, I'm getting like Carl's attention, getting Will's attention, getting the guy's attention. Like, Showing them like what I see from the sideline and telling them like try this move, or do that, or do this. That's just I can't help it, man. That's just me. You're coaching. I was like yeah. that when I was with the Bucks. I'm gonna be like that now. I'm gonna be like that after. That's just I can't help it. It's how I am. I think that's what your teammates love about you. How much would it mean to you to to finish where you started? I grew up a Bucks fan. I was blessed enough to get drafted to the Bucks, and I think a lot of times people. They take how things ended and the little back and forth. I think they get confused about what really happened. And um, when you play this game, people forget that they, there's two forces to it. There's the game side and the business side. Yeah. And sometimes the business portion of it gets in the way. And sometimes things can be done and said where you have a conflict of interest. And when that happens, for both sides, both parties, you have to just make the best decision for each other. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change or take away from the love that you have for each other. That organization has always shown me love, and I'm going to always love that organization. So I remember 
when I went to Carolina, it was mid-season. I did an interview, and I got online on the interview and said, I'm a buck for life, and I'm going to retire as a buccaneer. And I walked back in the locker room, and they was like, dang, it's like that? I'm like, yeah, it's like that. I'm always going to be a buccaneer. That don't change because I got on a different uniform. Mm. Yeah, it didn't stop you, know, you from so, sacking Jameis three times in that game. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, for me, my dream is, regardless of whether I play again as a buck, I'm going to retire as a book. Everybody, you know, you go back to your team, you sign this one day or whatever, however the process mm-hmm. is. I don't know. That is going to happen. Yeah. I can guarantee that. So regardless of whether I play as a buck again, I will retire as a buck in here. So, um, you know, I love the organization. I just, I love the city of Tampa. I'm in, I'm in Dallas right now. And I keep trying to convince my wife some way to get back to Tampa. It's not working. But, you know, I just uh, I love Tampa. I love the fans and I love the Bucks. And I think sometimes when you bump heads, things you can get misconstrued. Sure. And let me clear something up right now. I did not go to the Carolina Panthers because I was mad at the Bucks. That is the <laughs> stupidest thing ever. Those words never came out of my mouth. That was speculation. That was written. And I never said that. But that's when why that's why Jameis went to the Saints, though, right? <laughs> just, I, just, I, I don't just know. kidding. Only I kidding. don't know. <laughs> when I went to Carolina, everybody looked at it as, "Oh, he's mad at the books." That is the dumbest thing. You mean to tell me I made a career decision because I was mad at a team? That don't even make sense. No. I got a wife and five kids. I promise you, the last thing on my mind was, "Oh, let me be able to play this team twice a year." Forget about the other 14 at the time. Now it's 15. But exactly. forget about the other 14 at the time. I signed to play with a team just to play one team twice. That is stupid. It makes no sense. So let me clear it up. I don't ever want to hear that again because it's not true. Okay. I signed with the Carolina Panthers because it was the best decision for myself and my family. I honestly hated that it was in the division because it's like this is going to look away, but right. it is what it is. You know, so – uh, my love for the Bucks has never went away. Yeah. I am that petty. I would, I would sign someplace you, just. You would. To, yep. Uh-huh. And I think you're the one that started I, that rumor about that, Gerald. <laughs> no, <laughs> please. Uh, let's uh, transition enough of X's and O's, and let's just talk Professor X and the Avengers in the Marvel universe. I know you're a, a big fan. In fact, Gerald, I met you a few years ago. Uh, you won't remember me. I'm sure me. you remember. Uh, at at Comic Con in Tampa, um, you weren't there to meet me though. You were there to meet who? Stan Lee. Yes. And why Stan? Why would I be there to meet you when Stan Lee is in town? <laughs> well, why? Well, that's a great <laughs> question. Uh, why were you there to meet Stan Lee? Tell us about that. It's Stan freaking Lee. Okay, for <laughs> anybody, if you don't know who Stan Lee is, I'm not about to waste my time explaining to you who Stan Lee is because you should know who Stan Lee is. I don't know. Absolutely. I don't. All I don't. The greatest Scott, Marvel characters that we all love, Stan Lee created. Scott thought it was one guy I named Stan Lee. I got worried that he was going to be in town. Stan, Stan Lee. Stan Lee? Stan Lee. Oh, He's Stan Lee. Lee. He created got you. Okay. Spider-Man and the Marvel yeah. Universe. I'm sorry. Your, yes. fa- yeah. your favorite. I'm going to sit this one out. Your, no, you're not. I'm going to pull you in on this. Your favorite superhero is Incredible Hulk, right? Your favorite of all time? Hulk and Wolverine. My okay, favorite Hulk. Marvel right, characters right. is you, Hulk and Wolverine. Right, yes. so we're going to play a little game here. Your, your teammates even referred to you on the box as the Incredible Hulk because you have this mild-mannered intellect, mm-hmm. you know, off the field. You get on the field. You flip, that angry monster comes out. You smash mm-hmm. through smash through the O-line like a brick wall, toss running backs through the air like Lou Ferrigno throwing a Volvo. And so now I'm going to give you a couple of Marvel superheroes, and I want you to give, okay. me, I want you to give me the NFL comp, the player who currently embodies the traits of this Marvel superhero. You ready for this? For the Bucks or anybody? Anyone. Anyone, and you you said you're a fan. You're watching them all, so all right. you're going to help me cast these Marvel superheroes with NFL players currently. All right, we're going to go Thor here. Thor, you know, the immortal Norse god of thunder, can destroy entire planets, can control the weather, can fly at the speed of light, and also drops a pretty mean hammer. Who is Thor right now in the NFL? T.J. Watt. Okay, that's a good one. I would have also— Does, ex- does Thor get injured, though? No. Because T.J. Watt's— Oh, no, Thor 
he might get injured. He's he's pretty indestructible. Thor, Thor lost his eye in Ragnarok. Well, so there yes, we go. He I stand uh, corrected. I hope, I hope TJ doesn't lose his eye. I would have also accepted Josh Allen. I'll also accept Josh Allen for any of these answers. Let's go to uh, Captain America. You know, he's the super soldier, superhuman agility and strength, stamina, paired with that all-American charisma and charm. You know, the kind of guy you'd like to take your grandma out to dinner probably and he has that almost indestructible That's shield uh who is captain america in the nfl right now josh allen no, that's, uh, yeah. that's yeah. acceptable. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. I, I would have also accepted uh, Jalen Hurts after watching him against the Vikings on Monday night uh, when it comes to that indestructible shield, uh, how he plowed through Vikings on his way to the end zone there. All right, so one of your favorites, you mentioned Wolverine. You know, he's got that special healing power that actually slows down his aging quite a bit. I'd love oh, to get some of that juice. Uh, he's got enhanced senses. And then, of course, his uh, skeleton made of that adamantium, indestructible, that produces his most notable weapon, which is obviously the razor-sharp blades that tear through his knuckles and then tear through his opponents. Slasher. Who is, who is Wolverine now in the NFL? Who is Wolverine? Does he, does he have to slash people? Like yeah, slashing like helps, moves, or is it? Are you hitting more on like the indestructible part of things? Either way, and don't say Josh Allen yeah. for this one. No, no, no. I'm trying to, I'm trying to mix it up. Um, and Wolverine has interesting facial hair too, so can that be part of the? Absolutely. We'll go Devin. Let's go Devin. Okay, White. let's go Devin. All right, okay. I like that. Yeah. You know who's the obvious yeah. answer? He he was a Wolverine. Tom Tom. Yeah, he's a Mr. Wolverine. Oh, Tom, Tom, no, but Tom's not. No, uh, he's a Wolverine, and he's slashing through def- uh, offensive tackles Aiden right now. Uh, yes, Aiden Hutchinson. Oh, okay. with right. is also oh, he just got here. He don't get a name. He doesn't get a name. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get hey, a name. No. But he was a Wolverine. Um, I don't care. All right, here he let's let's here. let's flip this. You, I'm going to give you the NFL player, and you assign a you assign a superhero. Uh, mm-hmm. Tom, Tom, and it can be a villain too. <laughs> uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Batman. Um, That's DC. Professor X. <laughs> He's over here talking about Batman. That's DC. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Professor X? Is Professor that... X. Okay. Why yeah. Professor X? Because he control everything with his mind. And <laughs> Professor X, he in a wheelchair. But he still gets <laughs> a job. Out of Tom is uh, still gets the one job. of these days, he will be. He handling his business. He don't move very fast, but <laughs> no. hey, he outthink everybody, and that's why he getting it done. So I'm gonna go Professor, good. X. Professor X. Man, I gotta get brushed up on my Marvel and my yeah. uh, and Stanley. I gotta get to know Stan the Stanley guy. Lee. It's Man. two names. Come on, that was that was good. Thank you for playing along with that, Gerald. Gerald, you're you're a man that knows his football, and we can talk three technique, and we can also talk Marvel superheroes, yeah. and uh, we appreciate it. We hope that that call comes here soon enough for you, and you get to finish out season number thirteen. But whenever we know that the uh, the bright lights of the TV cameras always seem to find Gerald McCoy, and they did today. So thank you so much for joining the Nod Pod. Thanks, Gerald. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and. Uh, I have a I have currently have a bet going on that oh. the Bucks are gonna start four and oh. So uh we'll let's uh it. let's get this win at home. Let's go three and oh and go Bucks. Hey, let's there make you is. some money. There, there we go. It is. Well, Thanks, Gerald. They uh I think they were his Super Bowl pick, I, I believe. I, I saw that somewhere. So and uh it's hard to argue. It's with usually it. a good pick. Yeah. Especially with was that. Was he defense. on was he on track with those Marvel he, guys? I don't know any of them. He did I know well. Wolverine. You, I can't I'm I'm uh, I'm hurt that you didn't know who Stan Lee is. <laughs> Stan I think Lee. a lot of people are. You think it's one uh, guy. I just Googled Stan. Stan Lee. There's a lot of them. Yeah, no, it was there's a only one. Cleaner, actually, Stan. that popped up on the I Google I can't search. believe he didn't remember meeting me, though. Yeah, oh, well, you're utterly forgettable. I bet. Apparently. <laughs> All right, uh, Brian King in the booth. Brian, uh, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, Cato, is there a superhero that wears red pants? Because that's who Scott would be today. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> no. actually salmon. Yes, salmon, salmon pants. Pants. Oh, That makes it worse. Salmon yes, pants. that would be. <laughs> cons- I swim. Up, I swim upstream, guy. Yeah, come that would, on. That would the be. The podcast is undefeated when Scott breaks out to red pants. <laughs> That's good to know. Red. Confused wardrobe man would be that yeah. superhero. There you go. There you yeah. go. He hey, goes. how about some headlines? You want some headlines? Let's do, it. do it. Fake, real. They all could be fake. They all could be real. Okay. okay. So uh, you tell me what they are. We'll start off here. Dateline, Houston. NASA moon plans. Internet stations to be installed on the lunar surface. As part of the current uh, Artemis program, NASA will set up internet for astronauts to use while up on the moon. Is that true or false? 
NASA. Well, I'm looking at the headline, so it looks very real. Uh, but this is the Nod Pod Gazette, so I don't know that that's a real outlet. Great graphic. <laughs> so wait, internet on the moon? Is that what we're talking about? Yes, NASA plans to set up internet stations on the moon for the astronauts once they get eventually get up there. Why would we need that? We already have uh, Elon Musk spewing all those Starlink satellites all over space to give us... I, I think this is fake news. Dial-up speed for the moon is going to be... Yeah. I'm going to say fake news as well. That is true. What? It's it is true. They're still really? working with a uh, mobile phone company to, uh, so the astronauts can communicate better with each other, and plus they can control these robots that they'll have up wait, there. Wait, wait, there's robots <laughs> on the moon? <laughs> oh my robots. gosh, we're doomed. <laughs> that, one is, that one's fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was true. Okay, oh how about gosh. another one? Here we go. Dateline, Petaluma, California. I Scott's love Petaluma. Scott's yeah. neck of yeah. the woods there. Yeah. Sign of the times, a couple wants to name their child an emoji. A couple is petitioning a California court to be able to name their soon-to-be-born child an emoji. The emoji has yet to be named in public. Is that true or false? What would be the best emoji if you're going to name your kid an emoji? <laughs> I think it's true. I think that there are there's sick and twisted people out there that would name their child an emoji. I think it's true as well. I I'm going to say the long nose emoji. Yeah. That would be, yeah, a fib. I, I like the melting face emoji. They're going to name their kid melting face emoji. Okay. You think Sideways so? Sideways tear laugh. That yeah. is uh, false. Oh, oh, that was, a false no, that that was, was just one. weird enough to be true. Uh, you want to do a couple more? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Dateline London. Across the pond here. Ride through. A man rides his horse <laughs> through McDonald's drive through An Englishman with an unbearable craving for McNuggets recently rode his horse through the drive through that's mm. not very weird at all. We have things like that I'm happen in Florida all the time. Hasn't happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think. So was it? It was just McNuggets. Is that how this story goes? Uh, my source here says yes. It was just McNuggets. <laughs> Do they call them fries or chips at McDonald's in the UK? Uh, that I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna say fake news because, look, if you get McNuggets and you're riding a horse, you gotta dip. How? Where are you gonna put the nuggets to dip? In, in, in your the dipping sauce. In your dip saddle. In your di <laughs> You're a dip a, saddle. Everyone has There's a, no. I'm your dip saddle. <laughs> <laughs> a fake I, news. I, I think that's fake. That's is true. It, oh, is it true? It's, it's true. true. Why Maybe would the Nod Pod Gazette waste ink on that headline? <laughs> it's I'm, so bad. I'm 0 for 3. This is not good. It's part of a uh, TikTok video a guy made. He's Give already me. got a 1.5 million hits. That's okay, last why one he here. Did it. Last one. Uh, Dateline Pisa, Italy. An artist's vision. It's the Leaning Tower. It is. An invisible sculpture sells for thousands. An Italian artist recently sold a sculpture that no one can see oh for $18,000. True or false? I, yes. This is, yeah. I think that this People, happened. Yeah. What is, yeah. Our, we've lost our hope in humanity. Art collectors. When we, remember the guy who bought the, he put like a banana peel on a wall a few years ago and taped it up there and someone bought it for like you know a quarter of a million dollars what do you think but this meant? is invisible there's nothing there there's nothing there which kind of like is just some of our shows we'll, we'll me <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to it me. it's all smoke and mirrors baby yes yeah. uh, it's true it's true it's, it's be actually true, true. Right. Uh, salvador guru even provided a certificate of authenticity to okay. the anonymous buyer salvador now, is you, salvador guru's real that's the big uh, you, that may be He's you know, now we know ritual. Now we know who has bought the Derek Jeter Tom Brady mansion. It's Salvador Cruz Salvador is going to put his invisible art right there in the in the foyer. That's, that's where it's how going. that's that's going to be our side hustle. Start <laughs> selling invisible art. Let's take care of that. All right, boys. Good show. Thank you as always to our guests Kevin Burkhart and of course the great Gerald McCoy. Yes. Uh, for BK, Chris, I'm Scott. Thanks for watching the Nod Pod. To get the full-length podcast, make sure you go to fox13news.com slash nodpod or the QR code. It's on the screen. You can subscribe on iTunes, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and get us every week in audio version. Of course, you can find the show on all the socials as well. So on behalf of the gang, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Nod Pod. Until the next time we're on, there are no off days. Unless you're Tom Brady. That's true. Just Wednesdays, though.